guys. Um, I just tried out this morning the um, Albinet. This morning I'm trying out the Albinet High um, Protection or Hope Protection um, SPF 50 UVA UVB Complexion Correcting Mineral Sunscreen. Um, it's obviously, um, I don't know if you can tell over in the natural lighting, maybe a little bit too tan for me. It's uh, in the <clears throat> medium medium it says medium full coverage blur effect it claims to have of course antioxidants i'm looking at the ingredient list this is a mineral sunscreen so it's zinc titanium dioxide um this this i'm testing this out fyi it came in my skincare haul and i featured it there um but um and so i promised you guys i would try it out this is kind of like I'm comparing it to my Elta and putting it on, it doesn't go on as smoothly um, and it's not as hydrating. It definitely is more, I guess, quote unquote, full coverage. Um, but I, and, but that being said, I don't think it masks any of my, um, you know, sort of underlying discoloration any better than Elta. As far as I'm concerned, I don't really see that this offers much advantage over the Elta MD that I'm using. It's a smaller tube, um, but it is it does go on, I guess, a little bit more matte. So we'll see how it holds up throughout the day. Um, but uh, I kind of like it. I don't know that I would necessarily. I kind of like it. We'll see how it goes. And I'm wearing the waterproof mascara today because um, I have. Um, some makeup wipes that I want to test out later this afternoon. You guys know I'm not really a fan of makeup remover wipes, um, but um, I did in fact receive a sample of the simple micellar water ones and some Neutrogena ones. So I thought it would be fun to see if I can't take this and the waterproof mascara off with those um, before later on today for you guys. And, We'll see how they do. Um, but yeah, that is where I'm at. I just whipped up my oatmeal. Um, this morning I made the Zotes again. And check out that Truvia brown sugar drizzle on there. If you're new here, I basically um, make a bowl of, uh, this is a bowl of shredded, one shredded zucchini, one packet of oat fit. Um, and this is my um, homemade cashew milk that I put it in and cinnamon, ginger, I let it cook in the microwave for a quick nuke, and then I drizzle on some true, then actually I let it cook in the microwave for about three minutes, then I added a tablespoon of pea protein concentrate, uh, which is half a serving for some protein. And then I drizzled on some Truvia brown sugar and nuked it in the microwave for an additional 30 seconds so it gets caramelly bubbly. So that's gonna be delicious. I've got my beauty dust coffee here. Totoro is having another spa day in the dishwasher. And, um, I've got my biotin here, and I've got my biotin here, so I'm gonna have that, and so yeah, I'm gonna have that, and then I'm gonna head out to work. But it is a gorgeous day, and aren't you guys proud of me? Look at this. If you'll remember, look at look at all of these dish towels I'm using. Do you see a paper towel here? I mean, I am still using them. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm not, but I have gotten so 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 much better. I mean. My carbon footprint has just decelerated, thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys and the accountability thing. I mean, you can still see them back there, like I'm not fooling anybody, but I'm definitely using far, far fewer of them. So that is where I'm at. All right guys, so I'm walking to work. Um, this morning I was talking about how uh, you guys have really helped me uh, cut down on my paper towel usage. Um, another thing I've really gotten so, so much better about to be, I'm just going to be completely honest with you, is my sun protection game. I mean, it's kind of funny. If you go back to my earlier vlogs, like when I first started vlogging in the um, late, uh, early fall, uh, you'll notice I really, I wore sunscreen, but the clothing factor was, uh, you know, I wasn't uh, donning the hat and, and what have you. And I got to thinking, you know, here I am going to be starting this channel talking to people about, you know, emphasizing sun protection like I do all day every day, but I'm going to have to be accountable for actually doing it now. And I don't know, I think I've really been following through and doing a good job and I have you guys to thank for that because it's funny, you know, um, in medicine, 
we recommend all of these things and strongly encourage people to do all of these things. But just to be honest with you, <laughs> at least myself and many of my colleagues, we're not always so good about actually doing it ourselves. Um, so I guess YouTube has kind of helped me uh, be more accountable for what I actually say and less, less I uh, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. Um, so thanks guys. Thanks for uh, reducing my cancer risk. But uh, some of you guys were asking me, do I wear perfume? And no, I don't. Um, because I find most fragrances um, can give me a bad headache. They turn easily, so I don't. But a word of caution about perfume, not to like deter you from wearing perfume, but here's a tip. Don't spray it up here on your neck and chest area um, because what happens is a lot of the uh, essential oils or whatever can react with sunlight and cause what's called a phototoxic dermatitis. And it may be a very low level of it, but enough to increase your sun damage um, and potentially cause it a bad rash. So I actually recommend spraying your perfumes on your clothing, like, uh, you know, in the back, like the back of your shirt before you put it on, um, or spraying it like on your waistband. Um, that way you get the, your fragrance, but you're not exposing your neck and upper chest to, to more risk of uh, the deadly poikiloderma of Savat, which is a cosmetic concern of photoaging, obviously, but also skin cancer. And women in particular, I see a lot of skin cancers in the upper chest area. All right, guys, so it's the noon hour. What do we think of the, uh, what do we think of the Avenue uh, tinted sunscreen? Is it, is it holding on? But uh, here is the uh, salad bar lunch rundown. I've got, uh, so I've got it on a bed of spinach as per usual. And then they've got this like broccoli slaw thing going on with like apricots in it or something. I have no idea, but it looked good. And then regular broccoli and um, a little bit of this three bean salad. And then I actually took, uh, they had tomato basil soup on the, uh, they had to, they had a tomato basil um, broth based soup and I just used it as salad dressing and drizzled it on there. Um, and it's got a few croutons and some slivered almonds and then my apple here and of course saltine. So that looks fantastic. Alright guys, so the work day is done and even though it's late, <laughs> the sun is still up and high. Um, gorgeous out. I think we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow, I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah, I was pretty busy, and I'm loving that lunch I had today. Hey guys, so I just got back from my uh, clinic, and um, I'm going to try uh, a little fun thing out that I thought you guys might enjoy watching, because you all are always asking me my thoughts on these, um, and uh, makeup wipes, and I got, um, I'm in the bathroom now, I have. I got um, two makeup wipes here to try out um, that you guys have asked me a few times about. Um, this is the Simple Cleansing Facial Wipes um, that supposedly removes waterproof mascara and is supposedly kind of skin and has all this like flowery language on it that's supposed to make us think it's like great. Um, and then I also have some of these Neutrogena ones which also supposedly take off waterproof mascara. Um, so today, so I'm wearing the Maybelline Colossal Waterproof Mascara today which is actually turning out to be a good thing that I accidentally picked that even though I don't like wearing waterproof mascara. So yeah, I thought it might be fun to test them out here um, on the Friday. On the Friday. Um, just a re-CeraVe. So first up, all right, so on the right side of my face, I'm gonna try the Simple Sensitive Skin Experts uh, uh, Micellar Cleansing Wipes. It, um, this has uh, water, I love how in parentheses they say aqua, like, ooh. <laughs> uh, isononate, um, a bunch of things that are like preservatives, we'll just, I'll just say, and then, um, 
also satirical alcohol. So I don't know, if you have rosacea, I can't imagine that you would like tolerate this at all. But I'm gonna try those. And then the, um, the other ones are the Neutrogena Makeup Remover. These are fragrance free. These don't appear to have alcohol in them. Um, oh, they have phenoxyethanol. I don't honestly know the difference, um, what that modification does. I'm not a chemist, okay? Um, but maybe these are slightly gentler just based on the ingredients, but we'll see who's who. So let's test it out. Okay, so we'll do the simple ones on the right. So here we go. This is just one swipe here. stings a little bit. I don't have rosacea, um, but it definitely stings. It is doing a respectable job taking the makeup off. I don't have the best lighting in here to know for sure, but I'm not getting like Frank Raccoon eyes. And so the other side we will do the Neutrogenas um, and see how the Neutrogenas are on the left little political battle of Neutrogena versus Simple, which is basically like, screw the marketing, Unilever, we'll just call this Unilever versus, uh, Pro what is it, Neutrogena I think is Procter and Gamble maybe, um, Johnson and Johnson maybe, yeah, I think it's Johnson and Johnson, M multi million dollar empire and not otherwise specified, okay. I'm noticing the Neutrogena ones are not stinging as much. I do feel a slight sting. I feel like the Neutrogena one was a little gentler. Like it's got, a, it's a little, the, the Neutrogena one's a little gentler. You can definitely appreciate that it's less alcoholy, I guess is the right word. Um, and seems to take it off um, that I can tell. But what I don't like about these is that, you know, and, and in the situations where you have no running water, is now you're left with whatever all this crap is left sitting on your face. And, you know, that does have the potential to, um, to cause a problem. This is what came off on the um, simple, this is what came off on Neutrogena. I mean, they're essentially identical, okay? Um, so now the ultimate test, honestly, I'm going to just wash my face and if I've got raccoon eyes, then we know that it was useless. Well guys, there you go. There's the verdict. I think I would have had to use a few more swipes and honestly, that's a lot of harsh rubbing on my eyelashes and I don't tolerate that at, at all. I just don't like like tugging on the skin. It's just not a good idea, especially if you have rosacea, it's going to flare a flush it's gonna kick off a flush. And honestly, like, if you went back to work looking like this, I think they may uh, give you your walking papers. I look a little like I've been sleeping under a bridge or something. Um, so there's that. Um, so next up, I gotta try some actual micellar waters, but I don't, honestly, I don't see how those would be too, too much different from this. I think they're basically the same ingredients in a liquid form. This is just the micellar water on a pre-soaked rag. Um, so, you know, there's that. Um, I guess environmental impact, although I'm not really sure. Um, so yeah, that is my first impression of makeup removal wipes. I am not a fan. Um, but um, I did like this Avene. I do like this Avene Complexion Correcting Shield. I think for you gals who use uh, sun, who use uh, who want a little bit more coverage and are using like makeup and stuff, um, you still want to do a base layer of sunscreen, like I did this morning, because you're not going to want to put this on your neck and ears. I mean, that's pretty expensive. This is only one ounce, okay? I mean, like that's a lot of money to, to be putting all over where you actually need sunscreen. Do a base layer of the thick and white stuff and then come in with this as your like foundation makeup thing. I, I mean, it's it's quite high coverage. It's somewhere in between as far as the makeup, makeup component. I'm not talking about the sunscreen efficacy or anything like that. I'm talking about as a makeup. I would say I'm not a makeup person, but this is probably somewhere in between this is in between L to MD. L to kind of is kind on dark spots, but this is not like coverage coverage, okay? Um, but it, the It Cosmetics CC Cream, that's like, that's like you could you could have, you know, a, 
you could have a basal cell hiding under that thing and you wouldn't see it. I mean, that stuff covers stuff pretty well for, for a tinted sunscreen, in my experience, having used it in the past. Um, this is somewhere in between, um, but the thing I like about this is that it's a mineral sunscreen, so it's zinc or titanium, uh, which offers the uh, capacity to protect, and it has iron oxides in it as well. This has iron oxide, zinc, titanium. So this will give you coverage against um, against uh, broader wavelengths of light um, and invisible light, which is probably important. Is which is likely important in um, in hyperpigmentation and, and melasma. I'm not sure if Elta's does because they don't list on this tube their inactive ingredients. I'm suspecting it does because this has a tint to it. See, they need to start late. They need to start putting that front and center because once people get wind of this wanting coverage against visible light, that's going to be a selling point for sun for these like fancy high-end brands. Ooh, we've got iron oxide technology. Okay, it was there all along with and all the tinted stuff. You just didn't know it. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, I kind of like this. I have to say, of the Avenay stuff, I, I like this. Um, uh, I, I think this is a good one. Um, I will continue to use it off and on. Um, uh, but I, um, it's a, the, the color that I got is a little too, maybe a little too, I feel a little too uh, Jersey Shore, if you know what I mean. Nothing against the Jersey Shore. I'm talking about the uh, MTV reality show. Um, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, orangey land. <laughs> Um, but anyways, guys, um, so that was fun, but I am going to uh, get ready to go to the gym. I'll check in with you guys later. Well, hey guys, I had a great run at the gym. Um, so I encourage you to check out my recent video on um, the most frequently asked questions about melasma and hyperpigmentation when you get, get a chance. Even if you don't have melasma and you're just like, that ain't me. I still encourage you to check it out because there are some points in there that you know I think might be helpful to you regardless. Regardless of how you respond to light as far as burning, not burning, sun protection is important to the skin as an organ system regardless, okay? Um, darker skin types have a natural low SPF, a natural SPF to them inherently uh, that does offer sun protection but not enough and doesn't offer protection against the longer wavelengths of light that penetrate deeper into the skin and contribute to persistent inflammation and discoloration, problems that often plague individuals of darker skin types. Stick with the baby sunscreens. Um, they tend to be zinc only and form a physical barrier that offers actually pretty decent protection against not only ultraviolet radiation, but also more of the visible lights uh, that can also contribute to the persistent discoloration. So when in doubt, select the baby varieties. Now, you know, for somebody who's darker, that's like, Okay, fantastic. Now I've got this white film on. I mean, this doesn't blend in particularly elegantly, admittedly so, okay? Um, which is why I'm a fan of tinted sunscreens as a second layer. Another one that I mentioned in the description box of that video is Coats, which, thank you, many of you clued me into that sunscreen and got me looking at it. And that is, you know, about 10 bucks. Um, I don't know how the, the color spectrum comes. You know, light, medium, dark, that's kind kind of like, you know, where where do we fall in that? There's five phototypes, so the, and then they only give you three, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, comment below on um, if you're a darker skin type and you um, have found a sunscreen with pigment in it um, that is zinc titanium dioxide based um, that you like and that you find to be effective. This helps me a lot in, you know, communicating back and forth with you guys, but also it helps me a ton when I work with patients. But um, anyways, I'm going to conclude the vlog here. I hope you enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye! <laughs>